and in the rod they hate me. My heart is severely pain within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Verse 8. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O oh Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on, on its walls. Iniquity and troubles are also in the midst of it. Destruction is in the midst of it. Destruction is in its midst. Oppression and deceit do not depart from its streets. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me. Then I will bear it. No, it is one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me. Then I will hide from him. But it was you, a man, my equal, my companion, my acquaintance. Verse 14. We took sweet counsel together and walked in the house of God in the throne. Let them seize them. Let them go down alive into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that I was won against me. For there were many against me. God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from of old. Because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. Verse 20. He has put forth his hands against those who were at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his hands. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved, but you, O oh God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Grant thirsty and deceitful men shall not live out of their days, but I will trust in you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This is the Bible verse from David. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God, somebody. You most welcome to the house of God. Amen. Amen. We must walk out to the house of the living God. We all know and we are aware it's being headed by the one and only man of God, Reverend Joe Asamoah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you know he's doing a good job, let's do our best together for him. Let's do our best together for the people of the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's doing a good job, so let's do our best together for him. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe somebody will have put his back on this ministry. And he is still facing every challenge this ministry is going through. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so many other things God is going to use for him to do for this ministry. Amen. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Not only him, he, she, uh, he is also supported by Apostle. Let's put that together for Apostle. Anytime his hands were lifted up, they were 
and the influence will win it. Hallelujah. So if Apostle and Pastor Joe are winning, it is because of us. Hallelujah. We are raising their hands up. Hallelujah. Praise God because of the support we have for them. So yeah, so let's put our hands together for ourselves. Hallelujah. We are also doing a good job. Amen. So many people have come and they are gone. But you came and you are still here. Hallelujah. You came and you are still here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says Jesus has sent the two apostles and six left. And Jesus asked them, You made it to her. Will you also go? Hallelujah. I'm asking the rest of us, Will you also go? I believe you are here to stay. Amen. I believe you are here to stay. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to mount up some praises and worship. Glorify the name of the living God. Amen. Shall we on our feet? I know his name. I know his name. His name is wonderful. I know his name. I know his name. I know his name. His name is wonderful. I know his name. I know his name. Oh, yeah. 
worship unto your throne. We sing a new song unto your throne. We sing a new song unto your kingdom. We sing a new song unto you, Jesus. We sing a new song unto you, God.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. He said that those that he loves, he do what? He rebukes. Amen. Amen. So it is the will of God to punish those that sin against him. Yeah. But yes, though, even though he wills to punish those that sin against him, he does not delight in the death of what a sinful person. His ultimate, ultimate desire for mankind is to live a holy life. And a worldly life. Amen. Amen. 
And we said that God has an individually, God has an individualistic will for us. Amen. Amen. Everybody, that is where we got to, and that is where we are going to continue from. Amen. Amen. Everybody that is here, God has a specific will for your life. Whether you are beautiful or you are not beautiful, whether you are handsome or not handsome, whether you are poor or not poor, whether you are black or you are white, it doesn't matter the kind of race that you are coming from, it doesn't matter the kind of money that you have, it doesn't matter the kind of poverty that you are living in, God has a specific purpose. It doesn't matter how sinful you are on this earth. Hallelujah. Most people think that because of their sinful nature, because of the way they are or the way they were in the previous times that they were living in the world, so God cannot use them in some specific ministry or God cannot use them in some specific ways. Hallelujah. But I want you to know that God has a plan and God has a purpose for every individual. Amen. Amen. And it is very important for us as believers to identify the word of God individually for us. Amen. Amen. What is the will of God for our lives? What is the purpose of God for our lives? Why are we on this earth? Amen. I remember when my mother came here and we went to um, North Carolina. Amen. Amen. Somebody asking a question and it always rings in my mind. Amen. When we went there, the people were serving her and the people were even fighting. Like, where she is going to sleep and how like everything that she will do and the people will come stop their work and come and serve her hallelujah so when the people around saw how the people were treating my mother how some of them will stop their work and just to come and serve my mother. You know, in America, it's not hard for somebody to say, I'm putting it off all of a sudden, just because he has seen somebody, and just to come and serve the person. Amen. So, one lady asked my mom, so, when you went to Ohio, did they serve you? Or did they treat you like we are treating you here? And my mother said something. In response, they don't know me. Amen. That is what my mother said, that they don't know me. Sometimes, because we don't know God, sometimes, because we don't have a relationship with God, it becomes difficult for us, for us to be able to serve Him Willingly, hallelujah. Because we don't know the will of God for our lives. Because we don't know who He is. It is very difficult for us to identify what He wants us to do. Amen. Amen. And it is very important that as believers, if we are going to identify the will of God for our lives, we need to know Him. Amen. Amen. I remember when very well that when Pastor Amy died, there are certain things that were happening. The wife would tell me if my husband was here. He will not allow this to happen. If my husband was here, he would not have done this in this very particular way. Yes. Hallelujah. And I accepted 
it because she was the wife. Amen. Most of the time, when we are trying, I, I remember very well that when I was in Ghana, people who walk to me and ask me that we want to give your mother a present. Amen. But the way your mother is, we don't know the kind of present that we want to give to him. And I, hey, and I ask them, why do you come to me and ask me? The question that they, the answer that they give me is that because you know her. Because you are her son. Amen. So we assume that you might know what she likes and what she doesn't like. Amen. Because we assume that she already has everything that she needs. And it's very difficult for us to say we are buying this for her. So can you help us? Amen. Amen. They trusted in whatever that I told them because they know that I am the mother, I am the son of my mother, and I am close to my mother. Amen. Amen. So they knew that I knew what my mother liked. Amen. Amen. The same way applies to us and God. If we are going to know the way of God for our lives, Amen. there is a need for us to know God. Amen. Amen. And there is a need for us to walk with God. Amen. Amen. We can't know God without walking with Him. Amen. Amen. We need to walk with him. Amen. Amen. I always say that you can never know me until you get closer to me. Amen. The more you get closer to me, the more you walk with me, the more you know me. Amen. The more you know what I like, what I don't like, what makes me angry? What do not makes me angry? Hallelujah. But if you always come to church and go, you will always see pastor smiling. Hallelujah. But if you walk with me, you will see what gets me mad and what does not get me mad. Hallelujah. Jesus. So, the second surprise that if we walk with God, we know what God wants and what God does not want. Hallelujah. So if we want to know the perfect will of God for us individually, what God wants us to do in his life, it's not just a matter of coming to church and pray that God we want you to reveal to us what you want us to do. It's not just a matter of coming to church to consult the prophet, that prophet of God, I want you to pray and reveal to me what God wants me to do in life or what God is willing that I do in life. Hallelujah. But there is a need for you as a believer to walk closer to God. Hallelujah. There is a need for you as a believer to get closer to God. Walk with God. Hallelujah. Come closer to God. Read your Bible day to day. Study the word of God and pray. And the more you study the word of God and pray and seek after the face of God, the more you walk closer to God, the more he reveals to you the things that he likes and the things that he does for life. Amen. Amen. That's right. Right now, I can say that all of us here, even though most of you have been in a church for a long time, amen, but I can say that Apostle knows me more than everybody here. Because he, she works with me. During the daytime, when I am alone in the office, she comes to the office. And assist me. When I am going out, she goes up with me. Hallelujah. To programs. And when she is going out for programs, I go out with her. Amen. So she will know what I like and what I do not like. Even though you have been with me for a long time. Amen. 
The same thing applies to God. We can be in a church for a thousand years. We can be in a church for 10,000 years. But if we do not walk right with God, if we do not walk with God, we will never ever know the will of God for our lives. Amen. There is the need for us to walk according to the will of God. Amen. To walk with God. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. It says that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Amen. In all your ways, every place that you go, you should acknowledge Him. Amen. You should acknowledge His presence. You should know that he is present. Amen. Amen. Acknowledging somebody's presence, in other words, means that walking with a person. Amen. If you are not walking with somebody, you cannot acknowledge his presence. Amen. Amen. I cannot go to a service alone and say that I am going to acknowledge the presence of Eric. Hallelujah. Why Eric is not with me? Amen. I cannot go to a party and say that I am acknowledging my wife. I can't acknowledge my wife, but I can't acknowledge her presence. Amen. Amen. So acknowledging the presence of God is walking with him. Amen. And not just walking with him, but going an extra mile. Hallelujah. Sometimes we walk with people and we don't take notice of who they are, what they are, what they want, and what they don't want. Hallelujah. But acknowledging him means that you are not just walking with him, but you are also taking notice of him. Amen. Sometimes we go to places with people and because, especially when we are in a higher position, because of the praise that the people put on us, because of the way that people hurt us, we even forget the people that we came with. Hallelujah. And we forget to acknowledge them and their praises that we even came with them. Hallelujah. Most of the time, because of pride and because of the way the people left us, we even forget that it was not by our mind, not by our power, but it is just by the Spirit of God. So we forget to acknowledge the presence of God. And sometimes because of the way people let us feel that, oh, we are very good and they help us in life, we feel like we, we are able to do it by our strength and by our mind. So we refuse to acknowledge the presence of God, that it is not by our mind, neither by our power, but by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. For everything that we are able to do in life, we should acknowledge God. We should walk with God. Amen. Amen. We should walk with God and acknowledge Him. The the other thing is that we should surrender our will to God. Amen. Amen. We should surrender our will to God. Most of the time when we come to church and we say that we are praying for the will of God, God, we want you to tell us what you want us to do. Most of the time, before we come, we already have something in mind. Amen. Amen. We already have something in mind that this is what I want. Amen. Maybe you are looking for a job. Hallelujah. Maybe God wants you to be a pastor, but you are looking for a specific job. 
and you are saying that God speak, show me what to do, and God is telling you that he wants you to be a pastor, but you don't want to be a pastor because you are thinking that when you become a pastor, you will not be able to get money to feed your, your family right now, hallelujah, but that means that you are disputing the fact that God can provide for you, and you are putting your trust in the work that you are seeking for, because you believe that in that way, that is where you are going to get money to feed your people. But in other ways, God is trying to let you know that I am the one that can feed you. I am the one that, and until you come to your senses and acknowledge that God wants me to be a pastor, it will, you will move from work to work. You will struggle and sometimes even you will get the work that you have desired and you, you will still not flourish or you will still not be able to make it in that job. Amen. We always come to God that God show us what to do. But even though we are praying that God show us what you want us to do, we have something at the back of our mind. Amen. Some of us too may not see that, oh, this person, oh, he was just working here. He's nobody. Hallelujah. He did not even go to school. He does not even have any qualification. Three days ago, he, he said he's a pastor and look at how God has blessed him. Look at how he, he is driving his own car. Look at how he's doing. Oh, then I want to become a pastor. I also want to become a pastor. So in his mind, he, he, he said that God is calling me to do his work, but God is not calling me to do his work. Amen. Most of the time we pray to God that God show me the woman that you want me to marry. But we have a specific lady in mind. I always tell people when I'm teaching them about how to identify the, 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 the voice of God. That for you to be a good prophet, you, there is a need for you to identify between or to distinguish between your emotions and the will of God. Hallelujah. Most of the time, you see that prophets are able to see everything that is going on in the lives of other people, but they are not able to see what is going on in their own life because they allow their emotions to override the emotions of God. They allow the will of God. They allow their will to override the will of God. So even though God is speaking to them that this is the way that you should go, but they also have their own will. And always when our will is always first, when we always put our will first, we will never be able to see what God wants us to do. Amen. So we should surrender our will. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So, he says that we should present ourselves as a living sacrifice. And that we should not be conformed to this way. Amen. Amen. But be what transformed. Hallelujah. To be transformed means that to make and, and to change something. You, you totally change it. Hallelujah. Amen. To change something Amen. totally. Amen. Amen. And to be conformed means that to comply with rules, standards, and laws. Amen. You comply with rules, standards, and laws. Sometimes the laws and the rules and our environment tells us that if we do not do it this way, it is not going to be well with us. Amen. But the Spirit of God is telling us to go this way. Amen. 
I remember one time I was looking for a job. Amen. And God helped me that that time that I was looking, I get a job. And one said that we are going to pay you, let's say, eight dollars. Then another is saying that we are going to pay you six dollars. Then I begin to pray that God reveal yourself to me. Amen. Amen. All of these people are saying that we are going to hire you. That very night, I had a dream that the one that was willing to hire me with good pay, I have stuck a pallet at that work. And a forklift driver have come and picked up the, the pallet. And it was written on the pallet S T I N G. Sting. Amen. Meaning that sting. Sting means deception. Mm-hmm. Or oh, being pricked by, like, you know how the scorpion uses. It is um, fit to plague people like a squirt. But yet still, I went up. I said, "No, I will do this one. This is what I want to do." Why? Because that is what was going to pay me more. So I said, this is what I want to do. This, this is the work that I want to do. So I went to the other dog and I, and I told them, oh, can you let me do it part-time? So that I will do the other one full-time because that one, they will pay me high. But God is speaking to me that this is not what I want for you. And to be honest with you, even though Later, I sat down and realized I know there is no need. I I know that this vision that I saw is God that is speaking to me. So I don't have to go through all these things. Hallelujah. I have to give up and go to the one that wants to pay me less. I went to the one that wants to pay me less and still my mind was on on that one that would pay me less. I wish I was in this job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is not where God was directing me to go. Sometimes when the packet looks so good, we let our own will deceive us. Amen. For us to know the will of God for our lives, we should be ready to surrender our will. Our own will. Don't forget that God created us in his own image and as far as God has a will, we also have our own will. Amen. And if we are going to be able to overcome or be able to identify the true purpose and the intent and the will of God for our lives, we should be able to sacrifice our will. Amen. When I was living, the other job that was trying to pay me higher, they were like, oh, so what? Is the other job trying to pay you? We are going to increase the pay that um, they want to pay you. We are going to ask them to so that you stay with us. And I told them, they, and they, 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 I can see from their face, they couldn't understand that why are you doing a job that is very high and you say that I'm leaving this job and, and, and opting for the one that is going to pay me a lesser job, a lesser amount. Hallelujah. But sometimes there is a need for us to surrender our will. Amen. There are some ways that look right unto us, but the end of it is death. Amen. Amen. So sometimes there is a need for us to surrender our will. Amen. There is a need for us to surrender our will. Obey, the next one is obey what you already know to be God's will. Amen. One 
of the things that is very difficult for us as believers is to identify the will of God for our lives. The individualistic will of God for our lives. But it is not difficult. It is not hard for us to understand the moral will of God for us. Amen. Because everything is written in the Bible. Every believer knows that the Bible says that we should not fornicate. Amen. You don't need the pastor to come and preach that do not fornicate. Every believer knows that the Bible says that we should pay our tithes and we should not rob God of our tithes. Amen. Every believer knows that the Bible says that we should not sow discord. Amen. Every believer knows that the Bible says that we should not backbite. Every believer knows that the Bible says that we should not lie. Amen. These things that we already know, these days sometimes you don't even need to be a believer, but your intuition, your instinct will let you know that what you are doing is wrong. Amen. There is a need for us to obey the will of God for our lives. Amen. Every sensible person, if I remember I was doing something and somebody came and said, oh, I want to help you do what you are doing. Amen. And how did you do it? And blah, blah, blah. He is coming for information so that he will start his own. Amen. If you want information, tell me you want information. And I'll give you resourceful information. But don't come to me and trick me that, oh, I want to come and do it with you. And take the information and go and do yours. Amen. And every sensible person will only reveal his will, his secret, to the people he knows. You don't just walk out and tell people, oh, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Every sensible person will always reveal his plans to the people that obey him. Hallelujah. Most of the time when we are in a family, you see that parents will always those, there's a language that we say there's a, 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 that a, a, a bread or a chicken that is closer to the, the mom is the one that eats the locust pies. Hallelujah. So the more you get closer to your parents and your parents, you see that they will begin to show you if you do this, this is how I did my business, this is how I succeeded. And those that are not obedient, that are outside, by the time I remember um, when we were in school, um, in, in Central University in Ghana, we lived in a hostel and the, the man had two children. And the man was very rich. And the other guy was stubborn and, and the other one was always with him, Francois. He was always with the man, following the man. And the man taught him all his secrets. Amen. He taught him all his secrets and when he died, he gave all his properties to Francois. Amen. And the one that was stubborn, he did not have anything. The same way applies to us and God. Amen. If we obey his will, the one that we know is in the scriptures, he will also continue to reveal his perfect will for our lives. Amen. We don't have to be disobedient to God or expect to be disobedient to God and still pray that God should reveal his will for us. It is hard to know. 
Tell him. Some of us, we come. Pastor, so didn't you see anything? Pastor, so didn't God reveal anything to you? God will never reveal one of my, my pastor. He says, I didn't see anything. I saw only darkness. Yeah. Hallelujah. They are always coming. Pastor, didn't you see anything? Pastor, didn't you? I remember, I remember there was one, this lady I used to go and pray with at Ghana. And whenever I go and pray with him, by the time I finish saying, eh, I will not say amen, you say, Pastor, didn't you see anything? <laughs> amen. What did you see? And sometimes, sometimes we are the people that allow the, the prophet to lie. Yeah. <laughs> Even if they are saying we have not seen anything, you still want them to see something and tell you. Amen. <laughs> You know, it is not pursuing the pastor to see and tell you that reveals the mind of God. If you are pursuing the pastor to reveal the, the, the mind of God for you and you are still not obeying the word of God, God will never reveal it to the pastor. Amen. The same way if you have children, you will not reveal your secrets or 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 what you want to do, or what you are doing to do the, your children that are stubborn, but you reveal, you reveal it to those that are closer to you when you ask them, oh, I can see, come and sit here, and he come and say it. Um, so come and go here, and he goes, do this, and he can say, oh, this, this person is good. I, I know he can take good care of my business when I teach him, because he, he, is, he is working hard. Amen. So when I, I teach him how I do my business, he will be able to take good care of it. The same way God wants us to live a good life and obey His will that we already know before He reveals the hidden will of God for our lives. Amen. Jesus said something that is very important. When He said that He is the Father and they were challenging Him, He is God. He told them that when I tell you physical things, Things that you are seeing with your naked ass, eyes, you do not believe. How much more if I tell you spiritual things? Amen. God is telling you physical things that if you do this, if you do not fornicate, if you do not steal, if you do not commit adultery, if you do not commit crime, if you do not do things that are going to make your body deteriorate because your body is a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Your body is a temple of God. Amen. So you don't have to defy the temple of God. And you are still defying it. And you want God to reveal His will for you. Okay. Sometimes it is hard to see and know the will of God. When we are not obedient to the with the things that he has already told us. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality. Amen. So it is God's will. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 says that it is God's will that we be sanctified. Being sanctified means that does not mean only um, abstaining from sexual immorality. That is why he clarified it and, 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 and added that sexual immorality. Amen. So he is trying to say that we should refrain. It is God's will that we refrain from all kinds of sin. So if we need to know the will of God, we should refrain from sin. Amen. Amen. The other point is that we should seek godly inputs. Amen. This is where most believers fall. Sometimes we do all these things that we are doing. means that you always need to come to church. 